Come out of the brush, all you pushers, assassins, and tanks, because it's time to get ganked by education. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that nerfs your ignorance level every week. As I sat down to prepare today's episode, I couldn't help but think that this show was missing something. Apart from a third episode in the Pokemon trilogy, I mean. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. Looking back over the last 20 episodes, we've covered a huge range of games, from hot current-gen titles to cult classics, forgotten gems to arcade staples, platformers, shooters, RPGs, and even an educational game. But for a show that prides itself on putting the U in edutainment, we have yet to cover the thing thinking gamer genre, strategy. So this week we're stepping forth onto the fields of justice to enroll in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and Women, and Trolls, and whatever this guy is. To start off, if you're unfamiliar with League of Legends, why? It's free to download, free to play, and beats the heck out of anything you're gonna find on addicting games. Plus, with over 85 champions to master, ranging from the epic to the quirky, the replayability factor is higher than Steve Urkel's waistline. Of course, you have the obligatory knights, sorcerers, and archers, but they're fighting alongside kooky inventors, nightmare creatures and top hats, Gambit from the X-Men, and a fratastic Viking. For crying out loud, one of the running gags in the game is about a manatee with a spatula. So this week, we're creating our own off-the-wall battle to see which members of the roster are most deserving of the title, Legendary. Let's talk rules. There's 86 champions in all, but we're focusing on the ones that have a clear inspiration from real-world history. In true LOL fashion, I've created a 5v5 match in an epic struggle of good against evil. I've cut the field from 80 champions to 10, grouped according to theme. We have the human from Greek literature versus the human from Shakespearean literature, the night hunter versus the vampire, the monkey king and the yeti, the angel and the demon, and finally, God v. God. We're putting each pair in their own separate lane and judging the winner based on their powers according to their real-world lore. Best three out of five lanes wins. Now place your bets and buy your Doran items because minions have spawned. Top lane, Cassiopeia the Serpent's Embrace faces off against Yorick the Gravedigger. Cassiopeia hails from Greek mythology. An arrogant queen, she's best known for claiming that she and her daughter Andromeda were more beautiful than all the daughters of sea titan Nereus. Claiming you're better than a god is a big no-no in ancient myth, so predictably, Poseidon decides to rage quit on her kingdom old school style. He also punishes Cassiopeia personally by tying her to a torture chair in the heavens. Ho <laughs> ho you silly Greeks. Yorick, meanwhile, is best known as being the skull from Shakespeare's Hamlet. Anyone who's gone through high school English knows the drill. Alas, poor Yorick. He was my friend, now he's dead, I should be dead, I have so many feelings! This play could have ended two hours ago if I stopped being such a pansy. I really don't like Hamlet. Anyway, Yorick was the King's Court Jester, which guarantees he was crazy. Cause as we all know, clowns are messed up in the head. So a wannabe hottie queen versus a disgruntled clown? Point Yorick. Round 2, Vane the Night Hunter versus Vladimir the Crimson Reaper. Basically, this matchup is a continuation of last week's Halloween episode, with Vladimir as a clear reference to Vlad Tepes, the inspiration for Count Dracula, and Vane as a throwback to Dutch vampire hunter Van Helsing. Instead of me rehashing vampire powers, just watch that episode. <laughs> How's that for shameless self-promotion? And as we all know, no matter how many times Dracula finds a way to respawn, Van Helsing is always there to to smite Dracula's ass. Vane takes the lane. In mid, we have the Rumble in the Jungle. Nunu the Yeti Rider against Wukong the Monkey King. Wukong was clearly inspired by Journey to the West, one of the four great classical novels in Chinese literature. The story tells the tale of the Monkey King, Sun Wukong, literally a monkey born from a stone who gains supernatural powers through Taoism. His staff weighs nearly one ton. He can travel 54 
4,000 kilometers in one somersault, he can transform into 72 different forms, and every hair on his body has magical powers. This King of Kongs was so powerful, he defeated 100,000 celestial warriors, 28 constellations, 4 heavenly kings, and a partridge in a pear tree. Okay, so obviously Riot nerfed this guy a little bit. Do I even need to mention the Yeti here? Real quick, the Yeti is a giant ape thought to live in the Himalayan mountains and carry around a large rock as a weapon. Ooh, <laughs> scary! Currently, the popular theory is that the Yeti sightings are actually people seeing the endangered Himalayan brown bear, which can walk upright. So basically, this matchup is an unstoppable magical monkey versus a bear that can't even protect itself. Sorry, Yeti. This one is a blowout. Fourth, the pure battle of good versus evil, with Kale the Judicator facing off against her sister, Morgana the Fallen Angel. Wait a minute, a battle between two angels with one fallen from grace? Sounds a whole lot like Michael the Archangel versus the Prince of Darkness, Lucifer, Lucifer a.k.a. Satan, Satan himself. himself. Yeah, we're even touching on religion this week. Crazy, right? Just to get everyone up to speed, Lucifer, Michael, and Gabriel were the three amigos up in heaven, with Lucifer as God's wingman. Literally. But when Luce got sick of playing second fiddle, he started a war in heaven to claim the top spot with Michael as his main rival. The Lord of Darkness against a dainty little angel? <laughs> Seems like a no-brainer, right? But these aren't your grandma's tubby little babies with wings. Oh no. We're talking the Enforcer. Michael, the Defender of Justice, the Healer of the Sick, the angel that gave Lucifer a biblical smackdown. Not not only throwing his unholy ass out of heaven, but shoving his face into the ground and stepping on him for good measure. Heavenly ponage. Point, good guys. That means we're all tied up 2-2 with the Clash of the Titans to decide the match. Zillion the Chrono Keeper against Brand the Burning Vengeance. Creation against the end of the world. Let me explain. Zillion is best equated to Father Time, who in turn is a figure inspired by the Greek god Kronos, the embodiment of time, often depicted as either an old bearded man or a giant serpent with three heads, a human, a bull, and a lion. Not the most consistent an artistic portrayal, but we'll go with it. According to myth, the universe began in an egg hatched by Kronos and his partner Inevitability. So who can challenge the creator of everything? How about a giant viking who will quote, go and wage war and defeat all the gods and burn the whole world with fire. During Ragnarok, Norse mythology's tale of the death and rebirth of the world, a giant named Surtur will be unleashed from the south, flinging fire over the earth with his flaming sword, purging the world and killing major gods in his wake. So the birth of the universe or the death of the world? The deciding factor here is the fact that there are survivors of Ragnarok, including two humans that find a way to hide from Surtur's fire. Plus, we can assume that Surtur came out of the universe egg that Kronos hatched. So what have we learned? One, Zillion takes the point, and two, when asked which came first, the chicken or the egg? The correct answer is the giant three-headed serpent god. And with that final point, the 5v5 battle of good versus evil legends comes to an end with good taking the nexus. GG guys, GG. Now who wants to play some dominion? I call the little girl with the giant flaming teddy bear. Anyway, it's just a theory, a game theory. Thanks for watching. Battle mistress, bouncing some blades, just kills and assists. Push that tower, follow my lead. I'll all team my team, continue our spree. Yeah.